to want bag milk. Bag milk. Bag milk. Oh, I swear. Bag milk. Bag milk. Bag milk from Oilers Nation joins us. I always on these short weeks nearly forget to call you because I'm like, it's Tuesday. And then I'm like, two minutes to go. I'm like, it's Wednesday. Call him. <laughs> Time's a flat circle at some point. You know, like every day just kind of blends together when you're an adult at some point, I think. It does. It really does. I'm glad to hear you're on your feet after the Oiler Nation golf tournament on Friday. Um, you've recovered, I think. So here we are. Yeah, it was a great day. Um, we sold out the tournament. Everybody came and had a great time. We raised a pile of money for Gregor's grads, which is a really cool cause. And uh, had a great day out at Millwoods Golf Club. The weather held up, so turned into almost a, a perfect tournament, mm-hmm. even with some drama amongst two nation teams right down to the 18th hole. Oh, so wow. It was, uh, it was a great day. That's awesome. Obviously, we got some news to talk about today as well. Uh, Leon Dreisaitl, how are you feeling about the new contract? He's a rich man, isn't he? <laughs> Holy cow. Like, oh, when I saw that go down yesterday morning, all I could think about is, like, what doesn't this guy have? Yeah. He's tall. He's handsome. He's going to have about $200 million of the Oilers' money when this is all said and done. So, I, but for real, though, I thought it was great because I'm also old enough to remember times when guys like Cujo and Doug Wade and Bill Guerin, the team couldn't afford to keep them mm-hmm. after their – quote unquote cheaper deals and they had to go on to bigger markets and get their paydays. So I remember those times when Leon signed yesterday and just how this is a different thing. This is a guy who's one of the best players in the league. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. He's won an MVP. He's won all those awards that you talk about. And he chose to re sign in Edmonton at a max term. And yeah, I mean fourteen million dollars a season that and helps. becoming the highest paid player in the league until Connor signs his is is certainly helpful, but if he didn't legitimately like his time at Edmonton or believe in the team, he wouldn't have signed that he'd deal. Go, he'd go get that somewhere else. So And somebody would have been happy to pay for oh, it. Yeah. So gladly. I think that it was a great day for Oilers fans. I hope Oilers fans enjoyed it a little bit because like I said, it's we're not that far removed from good players on our team leaving. I, I mean like Oilers mm-hmm. Nation exists because Ryan Smith left over like a hundred grand. Yeah. Or whatever the story was back in the day. So like different point in the franchise and i think it's super cool that leon stuck around and i also thought it was cool that he didn't fart around like matthews does with these like four-year contracts five years he just he goes you know what max give it to me and by the by the time this one's done he'll have spent you know 19 years in the Oilers organization so pretty that's, cool day for the fan base that's one thing jimmy said to me though yesterday when we reported oh dry side will sign and he goes what is connor mcdavid gonna sign for next year <laughs> like, well if i mean like you could argue what if, if leon got 14 which is well deserved by the mm-hmm. way is connor gonna get 18 <laughs> like and what? nobody would bat an eye about it either you just go yeah that makes sense is the cap supposed to go up i mean it should go up every year in theory so yeah could see that and then the other thing is what does bouchard get i mean you already got darnell nurse for nine million so yeah this the others are going to have a very interesting cap dance over the next handful of years with these guys coming up because like you know if yesterday's signing with leon dry signals to me that connor's is probably coming too and yeah there you go okay those two are the ones you really need bouchard obviously he's going to need a new deal but it's going to be fascinating to see how the Oilers manage their salary cap over the coming years because they're going to have some massive contracts on their books. Mm-hmm. And you just got to hope the cap, the cap goes up. So leave your house today and go buy a jersey or something. We need to, <laughs> do, we need to do our part. <laughs> That's uh, yeah, it's a good problem to have, to, to have these superstars who want to stay here. And you know that, yeah, Dreisaitl didn't sign that contract until he probably ran it by Connor at some point. <laughs> Well, even yesterday in his interviews, he goes, well, you know, he's going to do his best for him and everything, but I hope Connor signs. And we're all like, okay, Leon, yeah. wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm also looking forward to next year, too, when we get to talk this, say, have the same conversation, Grant, when all the people in Toronto oh. that are doing their little countdowns that Connor's coming home, quote, unquote, when he just signs another max term deal in Edmonton. <laughs> and going, Ball. So I'm also looking forward to that because we got a little bit of that yesterday with Leon. Can't wait for it with Connor. It's always sweeter with, with Connor, too, yeah. And they they do the fake photos where they put him in a Leafs jersey. And why wouldn't he want to be a Leaf? Why wouldn't he want to come here? 
It's, yeah, it's why it why would he want to go to a team that's won significantly less than the team he's currently <laughs> on? Why would he want to do that? You can read all about the dry side I'll sign in and a whole lot more at OilersNation.com. Thanks for joining us today, Bagged Milk. Thanks, boys.